Hello everyone and welcome back to another YouTube video. My name is John Hammond and today we're looking at some Hack the Box. I want to showcase the bucket machine from Hack the Box which is a medium in difficulty rated machine. Uh, it should be retiring very soon as this video releases. So I want to uh, give it the old college try and uh, we'll see what we get into. I think this will be a little bit of fun here. So I'll hop over to my computer screen. I am connected to the VPN. I do have a little space set up for me in the hack the box directory out of my CTF directory. And I'm going to make a directory for YouTube bucket. And uh, let's hop over there. I'll get started with a readme, although I don't know how much I'll actually use it as I tend to. Uh, so we'll just note who I am and what I'm doing, the date and stuff, maybe. No, nah, who cares? Uh, let's grab the IP address for this machine, which I have over on the website, kind of as you saw on my other monitor here. The website for this machine, or the IP address for this, is uh, 10101012. So let's start some enumeration, right? Let's go. I'm going to make an nmap directory so I can go ahead and run the command nmap, tac sc for default scripts, tac sv to enumerate versions, tac on nmap initial. I'm going to output it in an nmap format uh, with that tac capital N. I'll specify tac v for verbose and I guess I'll add in the IP address since it kind of needs to know that. So now let's go ahead and hit enter here and let's see what comes back. I see a new port, okay, 22, so SSH, and port 80. Uh, so it looks like maybe running a server here, a little web server. Uh, we could open that up in like Sublime Text to get a better view of that. Yep, okay, so port 22 and port 80. Good enough. So if we have port 80 open, that might be worth looking into because to connect with SSH, we would kind of need to know some user credentials. So that's not super helpful for us right now because we don't know anything. We're still kind of looking around. Uh, let's take a look at that port 80. I'll go ahead and get a web browser open. I guess I'll just use Google Chrome here. And the IP address is 10.10.10.212, right? Yeah. Ooh, okay. So that redirected me or tried to bring me to bucket htb and it looks like i'll need to go ahead and add that into our it's at hosts file so i will sudo nano that and uh slap in that ip address uh and bucket.htb is kind of what we're looking for there okay uh while we're kind of looking around here let's actually start up another nmap scan i'll use a uh aggressive <laughs> tac p tac uh so we're looking at all ports just in case Anything uh, we're overlooking here, I think is maybe good to do. Let's just let it go in the background. That's totally fine for us. Oh, okay. And now we have a bucket.htb website that is loaded. Um, <laughs> bug bounty and zero day research. Uh, ransomware alerts. Okay. These are all dating back to March. Cloud updates. Customize ads that suits to your business. You can contact us at this email address and a mobile number that's totally not real. I wonder if that support email actually like goes anywhere. Like, is the bucket kind of gimmick for this machine? Like, you send stuff into an email bucket. I don't know. We could we could if we wanted to. If, if we're really scraping at straws, if we're getting kind of desperate, and we can uh, we try and send an email over there. I don't know. Uh, clicking on these links, though, they all seem to take me to nowhere. I, I get the anchor, or that hashtag, that octothorpe, that pound symbol that just brings me back to the home page. Uh, let's view the source here. You can right click and uh, view page source or hit control U on your keyboard. And now we're looking at the HTML. So there's not a lot really here. CSS, inline CSS, so kind of boring. That's all going to be static. Nothing extremely interesting that we could actually work with or interact with. Some JavaScript, a little bit, but just resizing. Um, coffee. Ooh, these image sources have a different link. They go to https bucket ad server images bug.jpg. What is that? Oh, so is S3 is S3 bucket meant to be like an AWS S3 bucket? <laughs> I'm sure. So uh, I am not super familiar with AWS S3 buckets, but it's essentially just like a storage object. Object storage built to store and retrieve any amount of data from anywhere. 
that Amazon goes ahead and puts out in the world with their cloud services, right? Ooh, Amazon S3 is designed for 9.99999. 11 nines of durability. We're in the double digits, baby. Holy goodness. So, okay. Uh, if we do have a S3 bucket that we are up against, then if it's kind of being referred to here with this link in this URL, we want to make sure that we actually can call back and respond to that too. Did my Nmap come back already? <laughs> yeah, dude, okay. Only, only the same ports that we already found. So let's grab the same exact line and set row hosts and just add that S3 prefix so we can work with that S3 bucket. Good enough. All right. So we'll type that in here as HTTP S3 dot bucket dot HTTP. Yeah. Okay. Uh, response to a little JSON message. Hey, the status is running. <laughs> cool, my guy. <laughs> That's super helpful. I mean, I guess that, that makes sense. That's kind of what like AWS and S3 will probably just return with a little update. I wonder though, if there's anything else in here, I wonder if there's stuff that we can kind of poke at and explore. My lights are flickering over there. I'm sorry. I don't know if that's like seizure inducing. Um, yeah, they're tweaking out. I'm just going to, I'm just going to turn those off. <laughs> Forgive me. Okay. 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 Let's see if there's stuff we can access in that S3 bucket. I'm going to go ahead and use GoBuster. So I will use GoBuster with uh, tack U for the URL. Um, HTTP S3 bucket dot hack the box. Uh, tack W for the word list we're going to use opt directory list medium. And I'm pretty sure you might have to use a GoBuster dir. Uh, maybe I'm using an old version of GoBuster. Uh, my syntax is just a little bit off, sorry. So you might need to use dir if you're, if you're using that syntax. We get a health response. Let's try and go to that. HTTP health services S3 is running and DynamoDB is running. What is DynamoDB? <laughs> Let's take a gander. Um, I'll Google that, I guess. DynamoDB. DynamoDB. Amazon DynamoDB, NoSQL key value database. What, what was that little blurb that Google was giving me? Amazon DynamoDB is a fully managed proprietary NoSQL database service that supports key value and document data structures and is offered by Amazon.com as part of the Amazon Web Services portfolio. Okay. So NoSQL makes me think of like MongoDB or other, other variations of it, essentially a database, but without, you know, the thing that makes it SQL. It's, it's no SQL. It's hip. It's cool. It's mainstream and hipster. So we also have a shell, which is kind of more interesting than just straight up health. So let's go see if I can reach that. I'll go to shell. And it just brought me somewhere weird. Um, do I need like a forward slash following that? Yeah. Oh, what the heck? <laughs> Way too zoomed in. Welcome to the DynamoDB web shell. Ooh, get started with some API templates by clicking that uh, on the menu screen or start the tutorial by pressing tutorial.start. To take a getting started tour. Hello and welcome. Uh, okay, so we can we can work with a console. That's fine. I have a little prompt here. Can I do stuff? Help is not defined. <laughs> Great. Um, JavaScript SDK. What is the Dynamo DB? Sh oh, that <laughs> little help broad got like frequently asked questions. Interactive way to experience and try out the Dynamo DB service through Dynamo DB Local. It's used for learning and testing purposes. Okay, what's the syntax? What do I do with it? How do I use it? Oh, there are links here down at the bottom, like the developer guide uh, and the API reference. Let's try and go to those. What is Amazon DynamoDB? Amazon DynamoDB developer guide. Okay, how it works, setting up DynamoDB, accessing DynamoDB. You you can access DynamoDB using the console, which I think is what we're looking at. AWS CLI or API, ooh, 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 ooh. If we can use the AWS CLI, that might be significantly nicer and easier to use for us. So 
How do I do that? You can access Amazon DynamoDB using the AWS Management Console, the AWS Command Line Interface. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me use the CLI. Downloading and configuring the AWS CLI. Download it here. It runs on Windows, Mac, or Linux. I'm running Linux right now. AWS Shell. I'm pretty sure it's something that I can just like get out of the repositories, right? There's a Linux installer. Uh, I don't want to use the curl thing. Is it just in the repositories? You can you can stop, GoBuster. <laughs> You're good, buddy. Take it. Take a chill pill. Ah, sorry. Studio apt install go buster. I was talking and typing at the same time. Uh, AWS CLI? Hmm. Maybe, you know, hyphen? AWS CLI. Oh. I already have it installed. <laughs> okay. So, AWS? Yeah, it's a thing. It's a thing. So, I need to configure it, though? I don't know if I've already done that. Hello? Using the AWS CLI, downloading, configuring. How do I configure? No, 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 no. I don't want to get into the, uh, okay. DynamoDB syntax. I need to, after install AWS CLI, configure the AWS CLI. So configuration basics, hit me up. Quick configuration with AWS configure. That's what I need. Just run AWS configure and an access key. Oh, do we need to supply an access key? It has like default values though. None. AWS configure. <laughs> oh, uh, I guess I already did set it up. The hing, H-I-N-G must be for me like typing anything. <laughs> yeah, that must be for me typing anything at some point before. Yep, US East is totally fine. And I think JSON is kind of what I had set it before. So if you hadn't set it up, you type in whatever region you think works best for you. I'm in US East. Um, and JSON is, I think, a fine output format. So now that that is configured... And again, we just threw in garbage AS access keys or secret keys. So that should be should be pretty easy. Um, how do I interact with DynamoDB now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go back to the documentation here. The command line format consists of DynamoDB operation name followed by the parameters for that operation. AWS CLI supports a shorthand syntax for parameter values as well as JSON. Okay, so here's the syntax to create a table. Put an item. That might be handy. Okay, and it returns it all kind of out as JSON, right? As the, the data format that we already specified would do. Using the AWS CLI with downloadable Dynamo, uh, you can specify an endpoint URL. Okay, so that might be how we can reach like the target, like this remote machine here. Here's an example, list tables, endpoint URL. Let's try that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, Use this syntax with the endpoint URL being s3.bucket.htb. Yeah. Ooh. A user's table. I don't think that's like a default response. I think that's got to be something actually coming from the server. So we're, we got somewhere. We got some progress. How do I, how do I list? the stuff out of that. No, I don't want SDK. I want to, I want to working with tables. Section describes how to use the AWS command line interface to create, update, and delete tables in Amazon DynamoDB. Okay. Okay. Basic operations in Dynamo tables. Yeah. Just let me read the table, please. I want to know what's in that users. I don't need to create it. I don't need to, I don't need to create it. Holy cow. Describing a table. Updating a table, deleting a table, listing table names. We've done that already. Okay, what about reading it? What about reading the table? Are the items, the items are the things that are inside of the table, right? Put item, get item, read an item. Is that what I need to do? Get item. Oh, and you can specify a table name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a key. Is that a mandatory argument? Let's try to run that. Uh, let's use our let's use our readme <laughs> because we should seriously do that. Let's use bash to kind of denote this. Oh, and that way we can actually get the endpoint URL in here. I will copy their same sort of setup to have the backslashes following these commands. 
so we know our table name is users at that endpoint URL. Will that work? What? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. The following arguments are required the key. I don't know what the key would be, though. Just like specifying an ID? Is it seriously going to work? Probs not. The number of conditions on the keys is invalid. Okay. What is there a way to not specify a key? Dynamo DB read table. Read the whole table. Reading data from a table. This is back in the documentation. Get item. No, they're using get item again with the key. I don't I don't want the key. Read table without oh, primary key? Without the primary key? Is that a thing? Querying DynamoDB without using a primary key. Here we are at Stack Overflow, everybody. <laughs> it all comes to this every single time. I need to query a DynamoDB table by a key that's different than its primary key. Um, um, querying using index. This is my implementation with Node.js of querying by another field with scan. Scan? Oh, this is a Node.js though. It's also not a language that I read. <laughs> How did we get here? Um, okay. It, it used a scan though. Is that a, that's another thing? Working with scans. I'm, I'm looking through the documentation here. Working with scans. Scan operation reads every item in a table. Oh, okay. Filter expressions for scans. I don't want a filter expression. Can I just like scan everything? Let's try that. Users. And now we don't need the key there. Let's try that. Ooh. That is stuff like a password. Items with password management. Their, their username management has the password of management, that thing. Cloud admin has the password of that thing. Is this going to be helpful? Let's grab this. Let's put this in our readme. The thing is... Like my knee jerk reaction is to want to use this with SSH, but these usernames are probably more like usernames for the AWS setup, not an actual user on the system. But because we have credentials, because we have passwords, that's still like something. We can keep that in mind and use that later. Which one did I copy? Did I copy like, the welcome and use the wrong password? This needs to be cloud admin if I were to try that. But I don't think any of these will actually work. Sys ADM, sys admin likely. Let's try that. But I don't know. No, no. Too easy for us. Yeah, that would just be too easy. So <laughs> what else can we do here? Um, what else can we do? That link that we saw on this page was referring to s3.bucket.htb and it had AD server in there. <laughs> Dope. Um, Malware. Yeah, that's the picture. Of that's what malware really looks like. I don't know if you guys know, but like if you've ever held up a micro, uh, <laughs> you've held up or held up a magnifying glass to your computer and you saw red bugs, that's when you know you have malware. Take it from me. <laughs> um, S3 buckets. Is there a way, like are there other S3 buckets? AWS CLI enumerate S3 buckets. What you got, Uncle Google? List buckets. Is there a way to do that? 
S3 API list buckets. Uh, does it need that endpoint URL again? Endpoint URL, HTTP bucket, uh, no, S3 bucket, not HTTP. S3 bucket, not HTTP? Oh. Oh, that is a thing. AD server, which is kind of what we saw. Can I do anything else with that? Help command. Available commands, copy object, create bucket. There's a lot in here. Can I like, can I legit copy stuff though? Or upload things, ooh. Delete objects. Yo, let's try it. Can I, can I list anything out of AD server? No. And AWS. Oh. AWS tag H? AWS help. What else is in here for S3 buckets? Oh, there's just like its own S3 thing. So using a sub command S3 in AWS, can I get help on that? Section explains prominent concepts and notations and the set of high level S3 commands. We just use S3 API as a sub command. There's also an S3 URI. Ooh, 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 single local file and S3 object operations. Some commands perform operations only on single files and S3 objects, the following commands. Okay, so maybe we can use like regular, like copy, move, and RM to delete stuff. Is there like a, oh, there's an, is there an LS command? Some commands only perform operations on the contents of local directory. So if I were to use AWS S3 with this endpoint URL of s3.bucket.hackthebox ls, it gives me AD server. Can I ls AD server? I can. And it has like a web website structure. Images, image, oh, sorry. Need a slash after that. Okay, these are the same images that we just saw on the web page. So this must be a bucket like for the website. Uh, <laughs> can we legitimately put stuff there though? Like, let's um. Uh, make it dummy text file. And let's try and copy that hello.txt to AD server images. Local path, S3 URI. What is an S3 URI? This is just me. This is just a showcase of me being stupid and not understanding it. <laughs> Amazon S3. I don't honestly use it all that much. What is an S3 URL? Yeah. What's an S3 URI? how to access an S3 bucket when presented with a URI like this. Is there like a S3 schema? Like I need to have a prefix for S3 colon slash slash? I guess so. <laughs> um, did that just straight put it on the website? Hello.txt? It's not there. Is it there? Images, what about the home? It's not there. It just uploaded it. What? Wait, 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 wait. No, wait, put it in images. I, I put it in images, images. It's there. <laughs> what is this voodoo magic? What is this dark magic that's happening? Uh, is it just gonna end up like deleting it every, like after a couple seconds? Now we stay in put. Now we sit in pretty. Did it did it display earlier in the images output and I just like didn't see it for some reason? Whatever. Can I reach that on the website? 
Oh, okay. I hit control shift R to get like a cache refresh and that got it. It's still, it's still alive and kicking. So if this is a web server, can we take advantage of this to like get code execution or something? Um, part of me wonders if this is going to end up running PHP code. Um, the file is an index.html though. Oh geez, I'm way too, way too zoomed in. <laughs> So if I were to like view the network tab, uh, we could try kind of as we just did, uh, checking if index.php would return something or if we'd actually get a response if like the home page redirects to a, a .php file extension. We can also check out in the network tab uh, in our developer tools if there are any like headers that might tell us, hey, the server is powered by um, PHP or something. We might be able to get a better idea. Um, but I, I don't see anything that tells me like hey this is php version 7 point million no i mean we could try it i mean it's what we could try i do say try everything um so i have a php reverse shell um the one that's you can get from like PHP reverse shell, the one that you can get from like Pentest Monkey. So Pentest Monkey, rest in peace. <laughs> I don't know if their website's still hurting or not. Uh, you have all this code that does a decent job of actually getting a proper PHP reverse shell. So let's try that. I'll copy that over here. And what's my IP address, by the way? I'm 14.3. Okay. So let's modify this PHP reverse shell and we'll listen on like connect back to port 888 or something. Then let's get a, another listener ready. I'll use Pwncat because I, I tried to in the older, in the previous video for hack the box and absolutely failed because I didn't have it fully installed. And I was like, uh, it's too late in the video. I'm not going to bother with this. So <laughs> I just bailed on it and looked like an idiot. Now it should be installed. Uh, oh, oh, I need an extra eight. My bad. Okay. So Pumpcat's going to do its thing. Cool, cool, cool. And we have our PHP reverse shell that should be modified and set up. So let's go ahead and try and upload this. I'll use that copy command one more time and php reverse shell dot php to s3 so we have the s3 uri 80 server and we'll call it like rev dot php okay so that should be uploaded now let's ls that and rev dot php is a thing it exists so if i were to go to rev dot php will it call back no what the heck? Did it delete it already? No, it's still there. What are you doing? What? What is happening? <laughs> Can I like curl this down? What if I curl it? I guess I don't need that S3 prefix. Give me rev.php. What? You, you literally exist. You do. I know you do. What if I go strictly to AD server? That's the contents of the file. Can you execute it, please? No, no, no. Maybe, maybe going strictly to S3 isn't right. What? 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 What did I do? <laughs> okay. So S3, the bucket itself, when we go to that S3 dot like subdomain prefix, that's not going to end up actually evaluating or executing the PHP code. But running on the actual website, bucket.htb, it will. I guess it just took a little bit to like get there. So we've got, we've got Pwncat set up. We got our reverse shell connection. Uh, our prompt is super wonky. So I'm just going to run bash to clean that up. And I'll hit control D to restore back to uh, my regular display there we go all right we're dubbed dub, dub data let's see what we got here 
Roy has a home directory. Let's tack LA. Oh, Roy has the user.txt, but we can't read it because we're dub 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 data. And it's only owned by him. So is he the only user? I'm gonna cat it's at a password. Yeah. He's the only one with a UID of a thousand or greater, it looks like. Yes. So what can we do? We can try and run Lin piece, right? Um let's get over to dev shm. I'm gonna go ahead and upload opt, I think it's OSEP linpees.sh. OSEP uh, linpees is literally just linpees, but it has the section of like checking internet connectivity nerfed out because I know this hack the box thing won't actually work. Why does that, why does it not get there? Is it not on this machine? What is, what? OSEP. Do I have Linpees? What? What happened? All right, let's sync and get Linpees. Uh, raw, save that in opt. Let me um, actually modify that so that the internet access portion, we will go ahead and, and nerf out. Internet access. Yeah, it tries these check TCP stuff. Pretty sure that's all that needs to die. <laughs> Let's find out. I'm gonna hit control F for internet just a little bit more. Yeah, that, that's the thing that actually runs it. And you could of course turn that off like with uh, some configuration stuff, but internet functions, yeah, it tries all those things, but those are just defining the functions. We can just nerf that out and not do it. So now back to PwnCat, let's actually upload off Linpees. Sorry. <laughs> This takes a little bit to like realize that it finished. I'm honestly not positive why, because it brings itself to 100%. Um, if I hit control C, did I lose my shell? Fudge, fudge, fudge. I said fudge, guys. <laughs> Is it still alive? No, it's not. All right, let's upload it again. I want the copy command to copy it. Let me drill it down. There we go. Okay. Let's run bash. Let's get to dev shm because it should have uploaded. Like it's here. Let me reset this so I have our, our pretty colors. Um, let's mark that as executable. Go ahead and run it. I'm going to tee that out so I can save the output just in case. Uh, and let's... Are you kidding? Text file busy? Does that mean like it's still uploading or like there's a handle on it still? Can I kill the thing? Yeah. If this fails again, then we can stop. Because <laughs> we don't need to be bouncing around wasting our time on this. We can do our own manual enumeration if Linpeas doesn't kind of come through for us. WTF? Who wrote this thing? <laughs> Caleb and I are still kind of kicking around ideas for it, but. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, I'm done with that. Upload, please. Give me a callback. Sit here for a while. Okay. 
<laughs> Sorry, I know that was agonizing and painful. Let's just do our own sync and enumeration. Um, PS. PS Ox. What's going on? I, I recently learned that PS Fox does a really cool job. Or faux. Faux pas. Uh, let me sync the terminal size, and then I'll run PS faux. Yeah. So the, that LinP's upload process is still happening. Something weird is going on. Maybe like DD. I don't know. I don't know what command might be doing weirdness, but Docker proxy is kind of in and out. Some uh, Java thing happening. That's kind of it. Are there any local services that might be available? I'll do some netstat peanut. Yeah. What is listening? I guess LNAP is kind of what I need to look at or something like that for listening. Listening, listening. 888 is me. 8,000 is weird. Where might that be? Whatever. Wait a sec. We have passwords. Like, maybe we should try this. Let's just try if we can get into Roy with some of these passwords. I should have done that significantly earlier. I'm sorry. <laughs> ah, I see Roy. That looked like it failed. What about you? Ooh. Okay. <laughs> now we are Roy. So we can go get that. Uh, we can go get that user.txt flag. Dunzo. Okay. Maybe. Uh, Go ahead and upload that, paste that in something, get it on the site, get the points. What else do we have? We have a project directory. This looks like code for something. These are like libraries for the vendor package. Is this like an NPM thing? This is a node thing? I might be totally wrong. But what's going on with the website? Are there other stuff that like we're not seeing? HTML, is that the very, very same? That doesn't have the images folder though. No, that's the same web page. You can see the you can see the HTML there, but it doesn't have the images. So that must be stored in the bucket app. That has a PHP file though. Lol, what? Um. And a jar, like a Java file? What is in files? Nothing. Okay. Excellent. More vendor folders. What's in this index.php? Is this the very, very same? Wait, no. This is... There's PHP code in this. Okay. Yo. Uh, let's actually make this readable. Shall we? Let's, <laughs> let's bring it over to Sublime Text and see what we're looking at here. So we load in something. Am I missing a portion of this? Like they just go ahead and make a connection. Wait, I, I was missing a portion of that. What's happening? Uh, maybe Pwncats screw me over as it does. Yeah, here we go. This is the full thing. It was hiding some portion of the code, probably because the terminal size wasn't synced and it was being weird in, in less. It might have hid some. Uh, anyway, we require vendor auto load. We use the Dynamo DB client library and we check if we have a post method. 
the indentation was weird on the other one. So this makes much more sense in that it's in an actual if statement, <laughs> like, and the logic kind of flows. Uh, so if a post method is supplied with the action variable or that action parameter being set to get alerts, then we go ahead and connect to Dynamo, the Dynamo DB, and we do a scan, kind of like we did earlier, checking out the alerts table. But there is no alerts table. <laughs> we only saw users when we looked at that earlier. Uh, filter expression, title, title, expression, attribute values, title, S ransomware. And then for iterator as item, it creates, oh, files for like everything that it finds. So it's like putting it in, putting the data of the item into a file. Oh, and it uses pass through. Okay, and that's a, can be a dangerous function call because it's going to run actual system commands. Uses Java to, oh, call that jar file, pd4ml. What is pd4ml demo.jar? pd4cmd, what is that? Quick Google, oh, it's an HTML to PDF command line tool. Okay. File var dub 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 bucket app files name and that variable is something. Can we control that variable? Can we get like command injection in there? Code injection? No. It's a random.html. There's totally no way we could get a hold of that. <laughs> so is this even useful for us? It's weird to me that it does this. It we it's weird to me that it just creates PDFs for the ransom, these must be the alerts, right? That the web page was talking about kind of at the beginning when we take a look at it. But there is no alerts table, there isn't one. Can we just like create one? We had that in the uh, documentation, working with tables, you can create a table. We need the table name, primary key and stuff. Attribute definitions and key schema? What is the provision table? Creating an on-demand table. What does that mean? Oh, gosh. Wasn't there an example, like, right at the very, very start? of just creating a table super simply. I mean, I, I know I know I just looked at one, but. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's go into our readme and mess with that. Let's see if we can actually create a table. We know that it should be called alerts. So rather than music, we'll call it alerts. Um, and title needs to be a value. Artist and song title, key type and range, key type is hash. I was checking to see what syntax they use so I could kind of try and maybe make more sense of it but I'm bad at everything. So let's try that title. Will that work? Wait a second. We needed to have, we needed to have the data value in there as well, right? because it would read data from the item that it returned. I was about to drive down that road and I think I could have messed it up. Let's use data. Let's try that. Read capacity units, write cap See, the documentation used a different one when it was creating it just earlier. Like they used 10 and five, so my smooth brain will just try that and see if we get anywhere. 
Um, I'm going to use AWS command line again. Error occurred. Oh, it needs to know where it's going. It needs that. It needs the endpoint URL again. Tag tag endpoint URL HTTP S three dot bucket dot HTB. Yeah. 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 Will that work? No. Hash key not specified in address. Dis How do they do it here? Key type hash. Isn't this the very same? Alerts. Oh, did I not have like it copied properly? Title, data, 510. Add in the endpoint URL, please. This is the, this is the real fail <laughs> that it takes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that created things. Now, when I listed tables earlier, how did we do that? I think it was just list tables, wasn't it? It was. Let's do that. List tables. Grab that syntax, pass it in. List tables with an S. Plural, English. We got alerts. Okay, great. Um, now what do we do? <laughs> the PHP script would read something out of this table, scanning for elements or items in there, Oh, and the title has to match ransomware. Okay. And then it will put it in files. Under files. How is this running? Is this running like as root? Is this bucket app going to end up being something that actually runs as root? I mean, maybe root is the one that's kind of using DynamoDB local. So probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. Apache is on as root. Maybe PHP is going to be pushed in there just as well. Maybe the bucket app might be. So let's just see what we do. Um, we need to put an item in here. Working with items, put item creates an item. Let's try that. Put item, update item. No, 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 no. There's gotta be more than that example. Put item, all they did was, oh, they can be stored in a JSON file. Is that it? Should I just create a JSON file like that? Let's create a item.json. And then the title we know needs to be ransomware. And the data, oh, I killed the last curly brace. Data can be HTML, right? Because that PDF command thing, head, end head, body, end body, HTML. Does that just work? Let's try that. 
now in our readme, let's kind of keep track of the syntax to put that item. Alerts. I think that should be okay. Let's find out. Error occurred. Security token. Oh, 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 oh. We need to add the stinking URL. Every time I forget that. Endpoint URL. HTTP. Let's just grab the syntax because I'm too lazy to type at this point. Running on empty, getting to the top of the hour for this thing. Ah, ah, sorry. Frantic, <laughs> frantic uh, alt tabbing here. An error occurred. Cannot do operations on a non existent table. We just created that. We just created alerts. We literally just listed them. What the heck? It keeps deleting my stuff. I don't like it. Now let's put this here. Good. Okay. It created it. Um, we could scan earlier, couldn't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's verify that it exists. Being quick. Moving real quick before it deletes everything, please. Ah. Okay. Okay. It seemingly exists, but now I need to get it um, with curl, right? Because it, it needs to have a get request in there or a post request. So how does this, what does this load? I'm just staging commands so I can have them nice and easy. Bucket dot HTB or X post, is that right? Yeah, I mean, that's how I make a post request, but I don't know if that would be S3.bucket. Or that's kind of coming in externally though. And none of those seem to have an index.php to it. Is that something that I can just reach like locally on the target? Because we saw that, is that the port 8000? I think it is. Localhost, port 8000. I'm just gonna curl, I'm just gonna curl that port 8000. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. PHP is not going to be present, right? Because it's going to evaluate it. But once that's set up, we can curl data with that action being get alerts on localhost 8000 on the target, right? So do I still have? No. Nope. Okay. It deleted the table. So let's kind of stage this and be quick. We can script this if we really wanted to. Um, let me actually do that. I'll remove all these so it's going to be big. One quick dump of stuff. Create the table. Create the thing. Scan to make sure it's there. Now curl it down. Looked like it would have responded. Maybe. Um, I have to go check in files now. Oh, come on. Is it not there? Did I do it wrong? Action equals get alerts. Pass through. It would run it. The title is ransomware. We saw that when we pulled it down. Deleted already. Is it like that fast? Mm. It exists. Oh. Am I not calling it? Maybe I wasn't calling it. Damn it. 
I'm sorry. You were probably screaming at your screen, John. What the hell? Uh, I'm dumb. That would work. Hello? Oh. I deleted all stinking already. So we have to be quick. We have to be super quick. Um, can we, like, copy this thing over when it's created? Maybe that's it. Let's go into uh, CTF hack the box YouTube bucket and let's stage a SCP command or something um, because we know the password for Roy, right? So we should be able to log in, I'm pretty sure. We don't really even need to be in Pwncat anymore at this point. SCP... Um, can I use SSH pass for that? I don't even have SSH pass installed. Sudo apt install SSH pass. Let's go. Now let's SSH to bucket.htb just as a sanity check. Yep. Okay. That works. SSH pass tack p uh scp var dub 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 bucket app files report dot pdf bring it here and it doesn't exist good because we would need to do all those commands again Did it delete already? No. Bucket app. How is that not working? Why is that not working? Bucket app file. Oh, it's result.pdf. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> one more one more quick on the trigger. That's all. Let's curl that down. Let's pull that down. There we go. All right, we have result.pdf, and we have finally, please sub in the mix. Can you display that? Can you see it? Thanks. I really appreciate that. <laughs> Can we get anything else from this now? Can I like load data? Um, maybe from this item. Can we do like an, an iframe? An iframe to like try and load a local resource or something? Let's try and get it set with a password. Oh shoot. Um, I might need to escape these. Yeah, let's just use that. Let's see if that will work. Grab the big long syntax one last time and we could totally script this. And I probably really should. I know you guys are upset at me. Um, let's pull it down. Will that work? Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, shoot. I should have tested like it sent Rashado, um, to see if we actually have the read permission. So let's do that. Let's do that real quick. I'm sure it's deleted it by now. So I don't have a, a whole lot of issue just running this all again, curling it in. Activating it so that it creates the file, SSH pass downloading it down, viewing the results. We have it set for shadow. Dope. All right. Um, we're, we root permissions. We could try and crack these passwords. Uh, I don't know how likely that is. Let's see if SSH is actually set up with a private key for root. So let's go to root.ssh tag IDRSA. Because we know that like SSH is enabled, then... Hey, there's a, an option. There's a potential, maybe. Did I lose my README? Where did it go? I feel like I might have lost my README. <laughs> did I, like, close it or something stupid? So if SSH is enabled, which it is, there's maybe hope that uh, table already is created. All right, curl it down. Wait, 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 wait. 
Oh, did I never save this rendition? Anyway. Now it's cleared stuff. Let's try it again. Uh, run curl, please. Cool. Copy it down. Get the result. View it. Nice. Got a private key. Problem is we don't exactly have new line characters. Do we? I mean, yeah. Maybe that'll work. Let's save that for uh, root IDRSA. And let's see if we can log in as root now. Let's SSH, tac i, root IDRSA. Uh, we should probably chmod 600 on that so we don't have the permissions whine at us. And then let's do that. Root at bucket.hackthebox. Moment of truth. Nice. Awesome. Holy cow, that took way too long. Uh, that was fun. That was that was really cool. That was a good one. Um, nice to get a little bit of exposure with AWS and S3 buckets because I genuinely don't do that stuff. Uh, and kind of cool to analyze some of that PHP code and kind of mess with our minds with that for a little bit. And it's an, also a really neat trick to just being able to load in files with like an iframe source. It's like local file inclusion in a really weird way. So I thought that was kind of awesome and kind of cool. Um, but wow. That was fun. That's that. I've been yapping for a decent amount of time, but <laughs> that was really slick. And uh, maybe you saw some neat tricks, whether it's just nerfing out the internet requests in LinPs or kind of fumbling around with AWS syntax. Um, I would like to kind of formalize this and actually get maybe some like, hey, here's a reference of like the commands that we ran to enumerate out um, and do specific things with the S3 bucket or with the DynamoDB database, NoSQL and, and data enumeration. Uh, obviously, I was just taking scrappy notes in my readme.md file in Sublime Text, but maybe something in like Obsidian or Joplin or Cherry Tree or whatever, Cherry Note, or whatever, ever one drive notes. <laughs> However you like to take your notes, there's a lot to learn from this one and maybe keep building out your catalog of, of stuff as you progress through more hack the box machines and, and, and stuff like this. So I think that's it. I think that's all I want to showcase. I think uh, we've done the machine, we've done the box and we got root. So that's the end of the video. Thanks for sticking with me. I know this one was a little bit more bouncy and crazy and off the wall as a, uh, I don't know, as I tend to do sometimes, but I really appreciate you tuning in. Uh, I really hope this was hopefully kind of a fun, entertaining video and still a little bit of education mixed in there with some good learning. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. If you like this video and you'd like to see some of the others that I do, please do the YouTube algorithm things. I would love if you could like the video. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Did I go crazy in this a little <laughs> much more than I needed to? How did you solve this machine? And uh, please do subscribe. I would uh, love to see you. Thanks so much, everybody. Uh, I don't know how else to finish this outro, so I'm not going to. Thanks for watching, everybody. I love you. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.